I think, my friends, we're live. Yes, I'm frozen. <laughs> okay. I can see myself. Welcome, everyone. I think, it's... my friends, we're live. Ah, I, I need to mute something. Shut up. Okay. <laughs> Sorry for the yes. technical difficulties. I'm frozen. Uh, welcome everyone to the History okay. Bounding Panel, your historical best every day. My name is Shari, pronouns she Welcome her. everyone. I think, my friends, we're live. <laughs> ah, I need to mute you. No, okay. <laughs> sorry for the technical difficulties. <laughs> okay, so uh, welcome everyone to the History yeah. Bounding Panel. Your historical best every day. So, my name is Shari, pronouns she. Welcome, her. everyone. I think my friends are <laughs> alive. <laughs> I need to meet you. Okay. Sorry for technical difficulties. Okay, so uh, welcome everyone to the History Guiding Panel. Your historical best every day. So, my name is Shari, pronouns she. Welcome, everyone. I think my You look I gave in the chat. Okay, welcome everyone. Excuse us for the technical difficulties. We had all our mics muted, but still we had some feedback loop. So I hope everyone can hear us now without any feedback. Um, this is the history bounding panel, uh, your historical best every day. My name is Shari. I am the owner of La Rose Postmentary. And I came up with this idea a couple of months ago um when i wrote a blog for modemus about history bounding which coincided with uh desiree designed by desiree her homebound history bound challenge on instagram and i know you has some amazing history bounding looks which she shared in a video on her channel which you can view here so i thought it would be a great idea to have this panel together and we have also a challenge on Instagram, hashtag history bound best, uh, where you can upload your history bounding looks and even collect a special badge. We will be sharing some of those uh, history bounding looks later on. And 
we will also be answering some of your questions. You can leave them in the chat and we will come back to them. So there's still an echo. I have completely muted myself, so <laughs> I have no idea what everyone's saying. So I just tried to shut down everything on my computer, so I hope that helps. Let's just wait a few seconds until we can can or cannot hear the echo. I have no idea what everyone's saying. I do still have an echo, I fear, but I have no idea where it's coming from. So, uh, friends, can you close your any browser on your laptop and just watch stream on your telephone? That might help. So I hope people in the sh in the chat can tell us if it's still going wrong or if we're good now. It might be me. I'm the cyborg here, so there's a lot of technology going on in my head, which might be messing with our streams. I think we're good now. Bart says he misses my band aid. Okay. I'm going to talk again, <laughs> testing. Is there still a echo? No echo? Not on my side now. Let's see what the chat says. I'm going to talk again, <laughs> testing. Is there still a echo? No echo? Okay, I have plugged in, put in some earplugs. So hopefully there will be no echo anymore. Um, please let me know if it starts up again. And uh, let me completely restart so everyone hears this in a echo-free manner and hopefully not annoying way. So again, Welcome everyone to the History Bounding Panel, your historical best every day. My name is Shari from La Rose Balsamenterie, and I came up with this idea a few months ago when I was writing a history bounding blog for Modemuse, which at that time coincided with the challenge from Desiree, from Design by Desiree, her history bound best of a history bounding, uh, homebound history bound challenge. And I've also seen so many wonderful history bounding looks by you on this channel. Check out our video when you can. So I thought, let's have this panel together. So much more fun. Um, right now it's the afternoon in the Netherlands, 
but we know a lot of people around the world are watching and a lot of people have shared their history bound best uh, looks on Instagram, which we will be sharing later on. And we will uh, talk about what is history bounding to us, uh, answer some questions, and we will also answer some of yours. So you can leave them in the chat and then we'll come back to them later on. For now, I would like to introduce these wonderful ladies and have them answer some questions about history bounding. So let's start with Desiree. Could you please introduce yourself and share your pronouns? Hello everyone, my name is Desiree. Uh, my last name is Teunissen, but that's not no way to pronounce in English. So the translation of that is Primrose. So that's why my channel name is Desiree Primrose. I run uh, the company called Designed by Desiree. I make uh, commission clothing with a big, big weak spot for everything historical and history bounding. Uh, I am working on making patterns, but due to, um, well, my ADHD, things are not always going as planned. So that's currently taking a bit longer than I had hoped it would, but it's still going. I released a YouTube video just earlier this CocoFit about drafting, pattern drafting for beginners. Uh, and that's uh, the Thwardian corset cover based on that original. So, hi. Ah, so I guess, I guess it's my turn now to introduce myself. Welcome everybody to my channel. My name is you, pronouns she, her. Um, well, I'm really glad to be a part of this uh, history bound panel. Um, I've been into costuming since 2011 and I started out doing uh, performances in costume and gradually um, learning to sew costumes. And now I like to uh, make historical costumes and I'm a big history bounding lover. And I would also like to um, address the fact that we don't have live captioning today because that was a very technical, well, very big technical problem. Um, I will be correcting the automatically generated captions as soon as I can for everyone who needs them. And then we'll go to the next question. What does history bounding mean to you, Desiree? History bounding for me is a way to, well, show who I am without words. I guess that's true for everyone who likes to wear a certain outfit or certain style of clothing. It's a way to express yourself. And I've always loved dresses and, and everything girly and princessy since I was really young. Um, I think I've worn, I don't, can't even remember when it was the first time I watched the Empress Sissi uh, trilogy on television. Um, ever since then, my, my heart was sold to everything <laughs> that was girly and princessy and fairy-like. And I really enjoy to have a way to express my sense of elegance and my ideals of aesthetic with the world this way. You? So the question was, what is history bounding means to us, right? Um, to me, it means a lot of freedom, actually. So um, there are a lot of fashion styles where there are a lot of rules. Or if you dress vintage, there can be some pressure to um, be perfect vintage. Or if you dress uh, historically accurate, be accurate from top to bottom. And I like history bounding because it gives you a lot of freedom to mix and match things. And um, well, the other thing I like about history bounding is that I can use the stuff I love and wear it more often. So those pretty clothes that I made, they're not somewhere in my cupboard waiting for that one or two events a year. I can just wear them whenever I want. And that's why I love about history bounding. So Shari, what does it, uh, 
What does it mean to you? Why is it important to you? What does history bounding mean to me? Well, I've been history bounding for a while before I even knew it was called history bounding. I have a huge passion for uh, historical fashion in all its aspects. Um, to me, wearing a historical outfit doesn't mean a dressing up costume. It means wearing something that I've made with a lot of love and care and time, but is very extravagant and nothing and not always for every day. But to go back to like a normal t-shirt and skirt, nothing wrong with that, but feels a little bit like that other part of me is just dressing up. While history bounding for me is carrying on that passion for historical fashion throughout every day, be it uh, a pair of Victorian boots or antique jewelry, but keeping that romantic and historical passion back into my everyday style, which is me. It's not dressing up, it's not creating a different persona, it's me. So history bounding allows me to always wear that passion. And I would love to hear from you, Desiree, what is your favorite antique item to wear with your history bounding? My favorite antique item, well, just two months ago, I have gotten engaged and my amazing fiance gave me an antique ring from 1910. So that has got to be my <laughs> most favorite, favorite history binding item that I wear every day. I can show you, I think, if the camera picks it up. what is your favorite history bounding item? Well, I had a lot prepared, but now I have to cross them all because my favorite history bounding item is your ring. That's so <laughs> lovely. Oh, <laughs> that's so romantic. I love it. Um, no, well, <laughs> my favorite history bounding things that are like antique items are mainly petticoats because usually they're very sturdy and I'm often to use and wear them and not destroy them because I destroy things. <laughs> uh, so petticoats are a favorite of mine. And um, well, as Daisy Hayes ring, I think antique jewelry is also <laughs> uh, a favorite of mine to wear because um, it's really easy to add that to your so that's, uh, yeah, that's a top tip, jewelry. And Shari, how about you? Um, my favorite antique uh, item to wear is purchased quite recently. The three of us went to a museum where we were able to purchase antique clothing and, and uh, haberdashery. And I bought a late Victorian silk uh, skirt, which I completely restored and reinforced because it had some holes in it, but it wasn't museum quality. And made to my measurements and put a new waistband on and it's purple, um, pattern and it has beautiful ruffles and ruching around the hem and I can wear it without a hoop skirt I can wear it every day if I wish and it's so wonderful to be wearing something with my size and length from the late Victorian area but I can wear it every day if I wish to so that's my favorite item one that I very much treasure and for everyone starting with history bounding or maybe you're already history bounding some tips to share. Desiree, if you could start with your favorite tip or advice for history bounders. Um, my favorite tip would be don't put your own bar too high. Just go for whatever you like. Thrift stores are amazing. It's totally, totally fine if something is not actually antique, if it's just a historical vibe. There was an Edwardian revival period in the 70s so maybe you can find something from that, or maybe a blouse with ruffles from the 80s. It 
just go for what you like. Like Shul already mentioned, there's no exact rules in risk rebounding from this is okay and this is not okay. There's no, at least in my home, I hope there's not any gatekeeping. Like what you are doing is not really actually history bounding. If you just want to do your hair in a historical style, that's also history bounding. Just do what you feel like fits you. So, yeah. And Shu, how is that for you? Well, I agree with you because that's the joy of history bounding. Uh, wearing what you love, not what you should wear, uh, following your own rules and uh, expressing your love of um, yeah, history, historical fashion. So I wrote down some things, some tips for you guys as well um, in my notes. Um, ah, I have a practical tip. Whenever you make or buy things, um, try to make them multi-purpose. So what I like to do is, um, for example, a skirt. I like to make a historically accurate-ish skirt, and then I can wear it for costuming, but also wear it for daily wear. So before I make or buy the thing, I already think about how can I put it to different uses. So I think that's great for beginners because nobody starts out with a complete wardrobe. So if things are multi-purpose, that's yeah, a big plus. And what else? Um, oh, buy second hand, of course. Uh, maybe you won't find antique items, but you can find things with a historical feel. And my last tip is um, to tell people around you, and this is really for beginners, one of my best, best advice, uh, tell people around you, I like old things. I like old clothes. And probably someone has an attic with old things or uh, bits of lace or sewing supplies or fabrics or clothes, and maybe they will be nice enough to give them to you, donate them to you, think about you when they see something at a flea market. So uh, yeah, I think that works really well. You'll get a lot of rubbish, but you'll also get a lot of nice things. <laughs> so Shari, can you share your secret uh, advice with us for history bounding? My apologies for the late reply. Because of the echo issues, I can only listen to the live feed, which is lagging 30 seconds behind, which is maybe sometimes why I look so blankly into nothing. <laughs> well, funny things are happening because I only hear them 30 seconds later. Um, my tip and advice, um, it's not about historical accuracy. It's about the feel or the look of a certain period. You are very welcome to mix up periods. Um, and it's about feeling comfortable and wearing something daily. You don't have to just do it on, on, on special locations. If your work allows it, do it while you yeah, wear your outfit while going to work. Sometimes it can be uh, easiest to start with something like a shoe. Wear a Victorian shoe to work. People might not even notice it's Victorian, but you will. You can start out with little items and before you make complete looks like full head to body history bounding looks. That might be a step too far for you. You might want to start with something little. Um, and again, what uh, you and Desiree already said, uh, vintage, secondhand, let everyone know that collecting all items um, and see what attracts you to a certain period. If that's the hairdo, do the hairdo. If it's a hat, do a hat. Um, you, if it's a beautiful Viking warrior goddess, be a Viking warrior goddess or wear your best lace around your neck. Uh, it's, it's not about rules. It's what you make of it and what you feel happy with. And feeling happy about history bounding is where we all started. So I would love to hear from Desiree. How did you start wearing history bounding? How did I start? Um... 
I think there's a fine line between when is something just normal clothing and when is it history bounding. Um, currently, there's a lot of things in fashion that have puffy sleeves. You could call that history bounding. That's perfectly fine. Um, I, I don't know exactly when I started to enjoy this. I've always liked different silhouettes that than the silhouette that was in fashion at the time. I was a kid in the 90s. I can tell you, I drove my mom crazy with wanting to wear dresses. Well, dresses were absolutely not in vogue. And if they were, they had this dropped waist, at least in the beginning of the 90s. And that's just not what I wanted. <laughs> I wanted the sissy silhouette. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't really know what to tell you when I started. It's, I think when I made more historical clothing for costuming that I just started to wear it for picnics and our events when I wanted to dress a bit fancier that I just thought I, well, why not wear my history, historical clothing? And yeah, I ended up wearing my Victorian bustle dress to um, our student associations gala. So yeah, I guess that's about it. So for, yeah, for me, um, I've always been dressing alternatively and um, I've always loved like when I when I was still into music, when I could still hear, I loved uh, like, looking at performers and bands who dressed up with uh, underwear, historical underwear as outerwear, stuff like that. It was so magical to me, um, but I didn't incorporate historical items in my wardrobe until I realized that the costumes I were making could also be seen as not costumes, but clothes. So I started treating them as clothes and not as costumes or not as dress up costumes. Um, and the way I made them also changed. So I tried to make them actual clothes, comfortable. And that's when I started thinking I could wear these more often because they're comfortable and I love them. So that's when I started, um, well, history bounding, I think. And of course, I only heard of the term because of the video of the lovely Morgan Donner. Uh, so that's when it got a label. But uh, I've been doing it quite a bit before then. So I think I'm going to give over the question to Charles now. Um, I don't think start, I have Shari? an official start date like these other ladies also said because we've always had a big passion and love for historical fashion that it creeped into our wardrobe without us even noticing, I think. I started wearing gothic clothes when I was 13, but it was always very like the romantical side or the historical side. So that also filtered in into wearing a lot of antique items or vintage items and uh, wearing heirlooms. And then um, I stopped wearing goth clothes for every day and it became more historical. So I've always, if I've seen a blouse in, a, in, in like a, a normal regular store and I've had like puffy sleeves or looked Victorian or Edwardian, I would immediately buy it or uh, went vintage shopping or thrift store shopping with my mom and I came across uh, antique items. I would wear it every day. I would look if things were museum quality, I don't wear that stuff. But if I could wear it respectfully and not wear it to shreds, I would do so. And term history bounding is relatively new. So almost all my life, I mean, as a kid, I tried to wear 18th century clothes. That was my princess wear, so. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it's been so long, I don't remember to recall the start date. <laughs> and I would love to hear from all of you ladies, your current beautiful history bound looks, because we have quite some variety here. They say, hey, sh explain your grandeur with the lace and everything. You look wonderful. Thank you so much, Shari. Um, yeah, I'm wearing... Uh an antique color. I don't wear this really often because yeah, it's kind of fragile and it's silk and it's antique. So it's it's really beautiful. I don't think the camera picks it up really well. 
I mean, can I, hopefully I can show you guys a bit better. It's really, really pretty. It's, it's, it's silk. There is this beautiful shine to, the, to it. It's handmade. I love it a lot. I bought it when I was on a holiday in London. It was more expensive than I normally would spend on things, but I really loved it. So I did buy it. Um, the rest of my look is I'm wearing a shirt that has a bit of a puffed sleeve. It's just Main Street fashion. I own it already for, I think, about 10 years now. So, yeah. And, uh, yeah, my hair is just up. I don't know if this is really a particular historical style. I would love to have the volume like Bernadette Banner has in her Edwardian style. But my hair won't do that. My hair does curl. So let's just make the most of that. So, Desiree, someone's asking me in the chat, um, is it crochet lace? But I don't think so, right? I don't think it's crocheted, no. I think it's um, bobbin lace. I'll post a picture on my Instagram later today with a close-up because I just don't know how good the camera picks it up. I think it picks it up, but I'm not really sure. But close-ups in pictures are always better than on camera with a webcam, I think. Shul, what are you wearing? Tell us a bit more. I'm wearing my daily Viking look. So um, this looks like a shirt, but it's actually a, a shirt dress, just uh, from a shop here in the Netherlands, Hema. You all know Hema, right? Um, and this is a like a, an apron dress, a Viking apron dress from a historically accurate pattern, but not a historically accurate fabric. And I have these lovely brooches, which cost me an arm and a leg, so I have to wear them more often than once a year. And I have the milkmaid braids going on, which is just like vaguely historically will do. And a little Viking hat with, with moth, moth holes in it. So um, that's my history bounding outfit for today. So I'm going to ask the same to Shari, if you can tell us about your fabulous um, clothes. Well, please. I am wearing a store-bought blouse, a cotton blouse with lace around the house and in the puffy sleeve. It's wonderful to wear. Um, I'm wearing an item that we also bought together. It's a uh, original Victorian gentleman's necktie which I added uh, ribbons to so I can actually attach it because normally it would be attached to a stiffened collar. I have an original late Victorian hat, which I hope you can see. It has bows on it and a silk ribbon. And my hairdo is also inspired about late Victorian. The hat pin I made myself, it's also Victorian inspired. And my, Edward, my earrings are original silver mark seat Edwardian earrings. And you can't see, but I'm wearing a uh, three quarter length uh, black satin duchess skirt with flock print, but it's pleated like an 18th century petticoat, only it has a zipper and uh, hook and eye closure. And then my glasses are 50s inspired. So I'm kind of all over the place, uh, but hopefully you can see that it's still a little bit coordinated. It still fits. I'm feeling my inner Mary Poppins. <laughs> which that's is cute. a good thing. So that's uh, my look for today. And it's incredibly comfortable to wear. Um, history Browning is trending right now. It's completely popular. It's almost like mainstream. You can see blogs, we have videos. And why is that? What, what are your thoughts about this? Why do you think it's such a popular trending thing? I think it's popular and trending because it now has a name. I think a lot of people were doing this and, and uh, had their aesthetic that they liked, which would be reflected in history. Um, and I think that it's now something that people know how to name. And especially because it has a name, we can find other people who enjoy it as well. Because of the internet, it's way more easier to connect to each other and I think that really, really helps. 
I think historical costuming in general is really um, growing currently, also because of YouTube channels like Bernadette Banner um, are getting really, really popular at the moment. So that really helps. Um, but I also think it's something that, like I said, has been going on for as long as fashion is a thing. If you look back at the Victorian era, there were these uh, tea gowns that had Watteau pleats on the back. They didn't invent that like, oh, let's have pleats on the back. No, they saw portraits and, and had surviving items maybe from the 18th century from the Le Robe à la Française that had those pleats. Um, and I think you can go back in fashion and make so many connections where, where the people look back at history from an earlier time and reflect on that. I mean, there's obviously some Greek Roman influence going on in the Regency era, but also at the at, uh, in around 1910s, 1900s, like in the Edwardian era, there's also this Greek influence. So I think it's been even the people that we use in as inspiration were also doing history bounding. Yeah, I think you said it all, Desiree. I think we've been taking inspiration from fashions before us for a long time. And now it's just, it has another name. And I agree it's popular because historical sewing is popular, I think. People have these things and they want to wear them. And I think, um, it's also popular because with history bounding, you don't have to commit 100%, you know? Um, you don't have to worry about being perfect or accurate. So I think that makes it a very attractive uh, style to, ad to adapt. So, yeah. Uh, I when I wrote my blog for Moda Musa, which is a Dutch fashion institute, about history bounding, I tried to look at what where the name originated from, who started it, and the only thing I could find was that Leslie Kay a couple of years ago started wearing outfits inspired by Disney characters while bound for Disney. So she called it Disney bounding. Where that transcended into history bounding, I don't know. But it's like a logical connection. If you have such a big passion for historical fashion and the way it's made and the materials and the look and the craft behind it, it, it follows logical that it trickles down into your everyday wardrobe. Um, uh, there is more emphasis on um, crediting uh, designers for historical uh, costume movies and we have great lengths of is it historically accurate or not or is it a great modern interpretation nowadays we know who those designers are were in like 20 years ago we didn't know we didn't they didn't get credit and so forth so historical fashion has in a way gone mainstream like they say said you could go to the H&M and buy a, his, uh, a Victorian style blouse um, so it's easier to incorporate it in your wardrobe. And it's also logical if you love historical fashion so much that you wear it every day, but in more functional way. And in, 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 in they'll say historical fashion is not functional, but if you want to ride a bike, wear an Edwardian walking skirt at three quarters length, stuff like that. So I think it's like a natural flow that where we're at, I don't think one person originated. There are people, of course, um, costumers that made it very popular and given a lot of inspiration and ideas and ways to sew along with them. Um, but I don't think it started with one person, but I'm very glad it's a thing in which everyone can. You wanted to say something? Yeah, I've been taking Did a look at the chat. Me you because I can't hear you. Oh. Okay, so I've been taking a look at the chats and Shari, um, how did you make your hat pin? Someone wants to know. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, it's uh, a it's a store bought hat pin. It's from a shop that no longer exists. Um, I have them in my web shop, but shorter. You add beads to them because the the end of the hat pin is is the pointy end. You're sticking with the pointy end, and the other one is flat. So you just thread beads on them and ornaments or roses, and then you uh, put a back of an earring to keep it in place. So here's the flat end, here's the bead, here's the earring back. And then you have a decorated hat pin. Um, let's see what is next on the agenda. I'm a little from my, from my, <laughs> my list because of the technical difficulties. Oh yeah, we're gonna answer some questions. We answered yeah. a lot of our questions, gave tips but we would love to answer yours as well. So we're gonna have a look through the chat, pick out some questions, and I think Yul's gonna go first. Um, I want to ask a question uh, that I found in the chat. I'm going to start with Desiree and then Shari. So the question was, if you only had one era to history bound from, which era would you choose, Desiree? For me, that would definitely be the Edwardian era. I just really love the aesthetic and the full squishy skirts and narrow waist. That's just, the, the silhouette is just really makes my heart flutter. So yes, definitely Edwardian. Shari? Oh, well, I love Edwardian. I think Edwardian and Victorian are almost the easiest one to history bound because they are not always dependent on like the silhouette for a hoop skirt. So you can make three quarter length skirts without hoop skirts, or just wear a bustle pad if you would. Again, go to use history bounding looks video because she, she shows you. Um, but I love Victorian. I love the ruffles, the lace, the intricate pleating, but that also occurs in the Edwardian period. So I would say late 19th century, early 20th century, that time frame for me is the most accessible and I love it to history about. Yeah, for me, um, I would just refuse to answer the question. I want them all. You greedy. But I will refuse. This is my channel. I will refuse. So I don't know if you have, have you found any questions, Desiree? Um, I've been looking to the chat. I can't really see a question so quickly, but my chat is not really um, responding, I think, adequately. So maybe I've just missed it. Uh, I do want to mention, uh, Kendra von Cleve has a lovely, lovely lecture on her Facebook site about looking back in fashion and fashion revival. Uh, it's really wonderful. I really learned a ton, so I can highly, highly recommend it. Uh, and also remembered suddenly when I was in London, I visited the store of Alexander McQueen. Now the first floor and the second floor, there's just, they are ready to wear line. If you want to pay 800 euro, dollar, if you want to pay 800 pounds for a sweater, go right ahead, that's your place to shop. But if you are interested in his fashion, you can walk up to the top floor and there is an exhibition of his work. And it was amazing. I cannot recommend it enough to go there if you're ever in London um, because they also showed part of his process and the mock-ups. Gosh, people, the mock-ups. <gasps> That's, that's just how, is, how fashion should be made, how I would love to be able to make fashion. Just make 13 mock-ups of the same thing in the real fabric, just so you know that what you want is exactly how you'll get it. That's just amazing to me. And they did some, such interesting things. They had garments there that was, um, photo, they took pictures of antique garments and they used that picture as a print for, their fabric and they 
they had, for example, a um, morning cape and they had a christening gown that, and they had another dress that they laid flowers on top and then photocopied the dress with the flowers on top and used that as a fabric with um, printed that as a fabric to use to make a dress. It's just, yeah, that's really highly recommended if you are ever there, visit that place. Did you have find any questions in the chat for, for the shoe? I think Shari has some. Okay, it's my turn. <laughs> It's question, when making, uh, what are the best pieces to start with for a history bounding closet for transition from modern from Rachel Cavanaugh? I think uh, this is not to self promote, but I'm currently doing a sew along for an 1890s shirt waist. And afterwards we're gonna do an 1890s walking skirt, which will I will do three quarter lengths, but others can do of course the original ankle length. Those pieces can be worn without a corset or if you add another hook on your skirt with corset. So it's easily to go from your history bounding uh, wardrobe to your historical uh, wardrobe. And they're quite easy to make. There's not a lot of fitting, especially with a shirt waist, as long as it fits on the cross, the shoulders and the collar, the waist and the bust is quite flowy. And uh, again, with the skirt, you only have to fit your waist and there's not uh, a hoop skirt underneath. You don't have to fit the hips very much. So that's very easy to start with. You can find those sew alongs on Facebook and I can share a link later on. But stuff like that, like simple like tops and skirts or like the wraps or, or, or capelette. A capelette is great for the winter. You can just throw it over your modern uh, winter coat and it's it looks adorable and it keeps you extra warm and when it's too warm for your winter coat you just wear it like this so separates I think are the best way to go make something that is not extremely form-fitting if you're new to sewing uh, but you can look at the silhouette and see oh the, 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 the pleating or the type of fabric refers to a historical period and is easy and accessible to wear every day so that's why uh, 19th century and early 20th century, I think is the best because if you go like to 18th century, there's a lot of pattern modification and silhouette modification to make it more wearable. It is doable. Check out Bernadette Benner. She has a robe anglaise she wears. She can wear without a corset, without a stays and it looks wonderful. So that's why I think those tips might be best for beginners. So if you, you wanna do another question, and I can look up something. I found two questions that I can answer so quickly. The first one is, how about thigh chafing? chafing? So the answer is either uh, cycling shorts or long underwear, uh, long historical underwear, and you're good. Um, and then the hardest part about history bounding, I saw that one as well. And to me, the hardest part is, I want to wear everything at once. I, I only have one body. So that's the hardest part. How can I choose one thing to wear? Ah, and that's the hardest part because you have to choose. So Desiree. Uh... Julie, you went on mute. I cannot hear you anymore. Sorry, Desiree, go ahead. Okay, um, I found a few more questions from my K. How can you make this rebounding practical? I love big skirts, but I can't wear skirts to work. That's if you really can't wear skirts to work, there are professions where you just can't. If you can't wear a skirt, you can't wear a skirt. That's just how it is. You could, however, do things with your hair, with jewelry, um, shoe wear. There's smaller things that you can do that give you that feel or aesthetic. It won't be the same feeling in a, as having a twirling skirt around your legs. But if you are in a job where you are just not capable of wearing skirts, that will just have to do, I guess. Or maybe, I don't know what kind of work you do, but maybe you could wear like um, a longer 
top that is almost like a very, very short dress over trousers. Maybe that would work for you. Um, yeah. This, I think that would be the best solution for this. And I also found a question I can't really remember from who, oh, from Sandy. Should I wait until I've made the corsets before I make my other clothes? Um, yes and no. If you want to history bound, no, you don't. If you want to make a capelet, you don't have to have a corset, corset made to wear a capelet, especially if you're not going to wear a corset daily. Why would you need to have a corset made to make a capelet? Or to make a skirt. There are always um, like 18th century skirts but you have the two ties going to the back and the front but you can make it so that you can wear it with or without stays or a corset so that would make it very versatile for wearing with history bounding every day or for your fancy costume with the stays or the corset. So that's what I would say. I know it's a bit of an unpopular opinion in the historical costuming world. You should always start with your undergarments. Yes but not if you're history bounding, there's no need for that. If you want to make the pretty, make the pretty. You can always make, try and ask for ways of how to make things more adaptable for a modern day wardrobe. I think there's always ways to do that. So I think she has a Okay, question. I have a few questions that require short answers that I'm just gonna answer quickly before we're going to share your wonderful history bounding looks. Shameless self-promotion. I am a sales point of American Duchess and those shoes are actually extremely comfortable to wear. And I have a bad back, not great feet, and I can wear them all day long, even on old streets, cobbled streets and everything. So if, for me, wearing American Duchess shoes or boots, you have something historical, which you can wear every day that are comfortable. So those are great to wear for history bounding, but also they're historically accurate for your historical wardrobe, so they're great all over. I mean, my mom has a pair of black pompadours and she by accident made a pair of trousers with exactly the same print, which are also black and she wears them together to the office. Works. Patterns. Um, I love black snail patterns. Again, I also sell them in my web shop, but it's not only about self-promotion. Truly Victorianism, go for, uh, like I said before, late 19th, 19th century, early 20th century patterns, because not all of them are, not all of them require a corset or a hoop skirt. Those are easily transferable to history bouting. Again, like the walking skirt I discussed, wear three quarter lengths, you can still bike, do stuff around the house, go to work. Uh, it hasn't, that doesn't have a lot of volume like a bustle skirt would have. It's like it says, a walking skirt. Uh, bicycle outfits are great for history bounding, especially if you have to work around and do stuff. Those outfits were made to move around in, so they're easily trans transferable to history bounding. So just look out for those patterns that are from those areas and or um, easily shortened or the volume taken out, that makes it easy. Um, I think, oh, <laughs> this one is very funny. You also type, <laughs> do we have an amazingly big wardrobe? Nope, I wish. I have a walk-in closet, but that also contains my more modern stuff. My husband has the other wall because he also wears historical stuff. <laughs> That is the beauty of history bounding. You made a skirt that doesn't require hoop skirt, wear it as history bounding, wear it in your historical clothing. You, like this is an antique hat. I can wear it with my original, my Victorian uh, outfit, but also like today with my history bounding outfit. So it's making creative use of your full wardrobe. It doesn't mean you have a complete history bounding wardrobe, a completely historically ar ar um, accurate wardrobe, it means combining the two and wearing them in whatever way you please, because that's how it works. So I wish, I wish I had every period with all the underwear and the shoes and the accessories, like a full house of historical clothing. We all wish that, I think, <laughs> but we don't, so. 
However, we can show you some inspiration. I mean, we, we have hopefully inspired you with our looks, but we're going to show you some amazing history bounding looks. I have a yes. PowerPoint which I'm going to set up. I also want to quickly mention, yes. I also want to quickly mention that our badge code will be in the PowerPoint. So for all the badgers out there, grab that code, claim your badge. Oh, yay, there it is. Oh, I love these uh, looks that have been shared. I love this one. I love this one. <laughs> so cute. Ah. This is so many great looks and so many styles you can do. It's just wonderful. And these wonderful. Oh, I love this. Yeah. I this love them all. Wonderful. So One of my cool. favorites. Oh, yes. It was hard choosing because otherwise this panel would take three hours. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. I love this. With the mask. <laughs> This is a the, the wedding dress is Tudor. That bonnet is amazing. Yay, those were great. Yes. I will be sharing this PowerPoint again. So don't worry about that. First of all, I'm going to give my word to Desiree. She's going to tell you if you still want to participate in the History Bound Challenge, for History Bound Best Challenge, and how to get the badge, how it will be working. So, Desiree. Yes. Um, history Bounding, uh, we have the History Bound Best hashtag on Instagram. You can use that to share your History Bound Best looks with us. We will try and share as many of them in our Instagram stories as well. If you tag your location with your post, that means that other people in that location can easily find that with for you, uh, find you with that. Um, I do want to say share them in your feed, not on your stories, because we can't find pictures that are in stories, unfortunately. I wish we could, but I just don't know how to. Maybe that's just my um, thing that I don't know, but. I haven't been able to figure out how. So please post your pictures in your feed. Uh, make sure your account is set to public so that we can find them and others can find you if you tag your location. Because history bounding is growing so much and we now have this name for the thing that we all love. That means that there's, you might think you're alone in your area, but you might not be and just don't know it. So that is why we decided to make this worldwide history bounding meeting. So please use the hashtag, tag your location, and hopefully you'll be able to find people that are in your area that you can hopefully one day when the situation is no longer the way it is right now, actually have live meetups. So um, that's one thing. And we will be having meetups in the Netherlands. Um, uh, I think that will be, uh, Shari will be arranging meetings. Yeah, Shari, you can say something about the meetups, I think. Yeah. Poor Shari with the lag. Yes, we talking about meetups. I am going to organize a history bounding safe distance uh, public uh, meeting. I think we're going to do a picnic. Uh, I have a Facebook uh, group, uh, a Dutch Facebook group called uh, Historische Kleding Hoeden als Zwaars Maken, wherein I will uh, post a poll in which we can choose a location together and a date, and then we're going to have like a history bounding picnic. So where your history bounding, we'll keep our social distance, we'll be out in the open in a safe manner, and then we can find our fellow history bounders. And maybe you would like to organize something like this in your area or your country and or do it online. I have 
uh, online sew up meetings uh, like almost every week. And it's such fun to see each other again, even though you can't do so in person. So do so in a safe way. And we would like to all thank you so much for joining us. Apologies for the technical difficulties. Captions will be up later. And we had so much fun organizing this and sharing your wonderful looks and such an inspiration. And I hope we've helped you starting history bounding or maybe with your new history bounding looks. And we're gonna show you the PowerPoint again because once was not enough. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Bye. Bye everybody. Thank you for watching. We love having you. It's not working.